Rates of chemical reactions, the iodine clock reaction, calculations. In this video, we will discuss the calculations for the chemical kinetics experiment. We will demonstrate how to build your plots, how to determine the rate of each reaction from the plot, and lastly, how to calculate the order of the reaction and the value of the rate constant. The data that I am using are from a previous semester, so your values will not match these values exactly. The first calculation is to convert each time from minutes and seconds to just seconds. For example, my first color change time for run one was one minute and 50 seconds. To convert this to seconds, we multiply the minutes by 60 and add the number of seconds to this. So in this case, the total time in seconds is equal to one minute times 60 seconds per minute plus 50 seconds, which gives 60 seconds plus 50 seconds, or 110 seconds. Once you have converted all of the times to seconds, the next step is to plot the data. The y-axis values will be the same for each of the four plots. The y-axis will take the values 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of peroxydisulfate consumed. The values for the x-axis will be the times that you measured during the experiment. Once we have plotted all seven data points on the graph, we need to draw a best fit line that models the data. This best fit line has to have two important properties. The line should fall between all the data points, lying as close as possible to each of them. And secondly, the line should pass through the origin of the plot. The origin, or 0, 0, has an important physical meaning for this experiment. Please consider what this meaning is. The slope of this line is proportional to the rate of reaction for that particular run. Here are my data plotted for run 1. Notice that each data point lies exactly on the 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14 grid lines on the y-axis. The x-axis location corresponds to the actual time that was measured between color changes. The best fit line must be drawn with a ruler. The line, as mentioned before, should pass between all of the data points as closely as possible and also pass through the origin, as shown here. We will calculate the slope using the rise over run method. Recall that the slope can be determined from two points on the line. We call these x1, y1, and x2, y2. The slope is calculated as the ratio of the differences, or y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Because we drew the best fit line so that it passes through the origin, we can use the origin, or 0, 0, as the point x1, y1. The second point will be selected by finding a point where the best fit line crosses where a pair of X and Y grid lines intersect. This is demonstrated by the point that is circled on the plot to the right. Notice that the best fit curve falls exactly on top of where an X and Y grid line intersect. Please make sure that this second point is as far away from the origin as possible as this will give you a better result for your slope. This allows you to read the exact value of the second point by reading down to the x-axis value and to the left for the y-axis value. Returning to my plot, we see that by reading to the left, my y2 value is 13.6, and by reading down, my x2 value is 840 seconds.
we can now calculate the slope using my second data point, which was determined to be 840 seconds and 13.6. The slope is calculated as indicated before. My numerator is 13.6 minus zero, and my denominator is 840 seconds minus zero seconds. And when we take the quotient, we get 0 0.0162, one over seconds. To convert this to a rate with units of molar per second, we have to multiply the slope by 1 times 10 to the negative 4 mole and divide by the total volume of the solution, which is 0 0.100 liters. Thus, the rate becomes 0 0.0162 per second times 1 times 10 to the negative 4 mole divided by 0 0.100 liters or 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5 molar per second. You will repeat this process for the remaining three plots. The table below indicates the rates as calculated from the four plots of my data. For run one, the rate was 1.62 times 10 to the negative five molar per second. For run two, it was 3.27 times 10 to the minus five molar per second. For run three, it was 3.34 times 10 to the negative five molar per second. And for run four, it was 1.70 times 10 to the negative five molar per second. To determine the order of the reaction, we will need several of the runs. The initial concentration of the reactants will allow us to determine the order. Consider the results so far as tabulated below. Note that for each run, we list the initial concentration of each of the two reactants and the calculated rate from the experiment. The rate expression is assumed to take the form. Rate is equal to the rate constant K times the concentration of peroxidisulfate ion to the X power times the concentration of iodide ion to the Y power. In order to determine the order with respect to peroxidisulfate ion or the exponent X, we will need to use runs one and two. Notice that the iodide concentration remains the same between these two runs, but the peroxidisulfate ion concentration increases from run one to run two. This will allow us to determine the order for peroxidisulfate ion. Likewise, to determine the order with respect to the iodide ion, or Y, we will need to use runs one and three. In this case, the peroxidisulfate ion concentration remains the same, but the iodide ion concentration increases. Let's consider runs one and two as we derive the equation we need to calculate the order of reaction with respect to peroxidisulfate. First, we can write the rate expressions for each run and divide on both sides so that on the left-hand side, we have the ratio of rate two over rate one. On the right-hand side, in the numerator, we have the rate constant K times the peroxidisulfate ion concentration for run two raised to the X power times the iodide concentration for run two raised to the Y power. The denominator has K times the peroxidisulfate ion concentration for run one raised to the X power times the iodide concentration for run one raised to the Y power. Since there is a single rate constant for a given reaction, the K values on the right hand side will cancel out. Furthermore, because we have a common exponent, we can combine the ratio of peroxidisulfate ion concentrations all raised to the same power X, and we can combine the iodide ion concentrations as the ratio, all raised to the same power Y. But now recall that the concentration of iodide ion is the same in runs one and two. 
and therefore the last term on the right cancels, leaving us with the expression rate 2 divided by rate 1 is equal to the peroxidisulfate ion concentration for run 2 divided by the peroxidisulfate ion concentration for run 1, all raised to the x power. In order to get to the exponent, we now need to take the logarithm of each side, giving us the logarithm of rate 2 divided by rate 1 is equal to the logarithm of the peroxidisulfate ion concentration for run 2 divided by the peroxidisulfate concentration for run 1, all raised to the x power. Recall from algebra that when taking the log of an exponent, we can bring the exponent down and in front and multiply the log, as shown in the next equation. Finally, we can solve for x, where x is now equal to the log of rate 2 divided by rate 1 divided by the log of peroxidisulfate ion concentration 2 divided by peroxidisulfate ion concentration for run 1. We are now ready to calculate the value of x, the order with respect to peroxidisulfate ion. In this case, using the data from the table before, x is equal to the log of 3.27 times 10 to the negative 5 molar per second divided by 1.62 times 10 to the negative 5 molar per second, divided by the log of 0 0.100 molar divided by 0 0.050 molar. This gives the log of 2.02 divided by the log of 2.00, or 0 0.305 divided by 0 0.301 which gives a result of 1.01, which is approximately equal to 1. And therefore, the reaction is first order with respect to peroxidisulfate ion. Using runs 3 and 1, we obtain a similar expression, but now the peroxidisulfate ion concentration cancels out, allowing us to determine the order with respect to the iodide ion. The equation for Y, the order with respect to the iodide ion, becomes y is equal to the log of rate 3 divided by rate 1 divided by the log of the iodide ion concentration for run 3 divided by the iodide ion concentration for run 1. And again, we can substitute the values from the table to determine the value of y, the order with respect to iodide ion. In this case, y is equal to the log of 3.34 times 10 to the negative 5 molar per second divided by 1.62 times 10 to the negative 5 molar per second, all divided by the log of 0 0.100 molar divided by 0 0.050 molar. This gives the log of 2.06 divided by the log of 2.00 or 0.314 divided by 0.301, which results in a value of 1.04, which is approximately equal to 1. In this case, the order with respect to the iodide ion concentration is again first order. At this point, we have determined that the reaction is first order with respect to both iodide ion and peroxidisulfate ion. The rate expression can now be written with the correct exponents, so that the rate is equal to the rate constant K times the concentration of peroxidisulfate ion times the concentration of iodide ion. The last step is to now evaluate the rate constant for the reaction. To accomplish this, we will calculate the rate constant for each of the four runs and then average the four values. First, we need to solve the rate expression for k. This gives k is equal to the rate divided by the initial peroxidisulfate ion concentration times the initial iodide ion concentration. For each run, we will now substitute in the values for the rate and the initial concentrations in order to calculate the rate constant. 
Recall for run 1 that the concentrations of both ions are 0 0.050 molar, and the rate was determined to be 1.62 times 10 to the negative 5 molar per second. For this run, then, K, which is equal to the rate, divided by the peroxidisulfate ion concentration times the iodide ion concentration is equal to 1.62 times 10 to the negative 5 molar per second divided by 0 0.050 molar times 0 0.050 molar, which gives a value for the rate constant of 6.48 times 10 to the negative third per molar per second. The remaining three runs have rate constants of 6.54 times 10 to the negative third per molar per second, 6.68 times 10 to the negative third per molar per second, and 6.80 times 10 to the negative third per molar per second. And our last step is to average the four rate constants so that our average rate constant is equal to 1 over 4 times 6.48 times 10 to the negative third molar per second plus 6.54 times 10 to the negative third per molar per second plus 6.68 times 10 to the negative third per molar per second plus 6.80 times 10 to the negative third per molar per second which gives an average value of K equal to 6.62 times 10 to the negative third per molar per second. This concludes the calculations for the chemical kinetics experiment. A data sheet and report guidelines have been posted to Canvas. Please contact me if you have any questions about these calculations or the report.